I don't know why I decided on purple lighting, but yeah, it's kind of making my face go purple, yellow, orange. Eh, I like it. Well, I, I'm too lazy to change it. Hey, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will tell you about some books that I've read recently that I have not featured in my other vlogs. So I got, I got some books. I got some books. Look, three of them are. <laughs> I didn't even actually notice that until just now. Three of them are hardbacks and all I've <laughs> Sprite edges of some form. Wow. Wow. That is a weird coincidence. Anyway, let's start with the first book I read. So this is technically a reread, um, but the version I read last year, um, it had a blue cover. And this is as a yellow cover. So this is The Minute I Saw You, A Bapetch Tune. So yeah, if you've seen my like TBRs or physical TBR videos, uh, you will have noticed that I've had two covers, two different colored covers of the same book. Um, it can happen. It happens. It happens a lot. I'm a sucker for that. I mean, spread edges. Hello. Uh, anyway, so this uh, technically a reread. I still loved it as much as I did the first time. Technically it wasn't that too long ago, um, but still. So we have Hannah and Sonny. Both have traumatic life experiences when it comes to relationships in particular. They kind of meet and uh, fall in love and all that. Uh, it's very much a mental health romance, you can still do everything kind of a book and it's beautiful and you should read it. Yes. <laughs> um, I love page two. It's just how it goes. That was probably the shortest explanation and feelings of the book I have ever done. Okay, so the next one I read was Layla and the Boo Fox by Kieran Millwood Hargrave with Tom the Freston, which is apparently either her husband or partner. Let's say partner because I don't remember if they were married or not, but they've been together for a very long time. So Kieran wrote the book and uh, Tom has, I almost said annotated, but that's not the word. He made the graphics throughout the book, which, by the way, chef's kiss. So, this is apparently based on, what's it based on again? <laughs> so, this is actually based on a a uh, real-life arctic fox who crossed the arctic, 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 oh for fuck's sake, a real fox who walked a long way <laughs> from home and the, the person who followed um, the fox. So in this one we we follow Layla and Layla has um, so she and her mum and her mum's sister and daughter, so aunt and cousin to Layla, um, they immigrated from somewhere, I don't remember where, they immigrated from somewhere and ended up in London, um, however, her Layla's mum, she got offered a different job way up in the north of Norway. <laughs> Thank you. Um, which was more to do with like her degree and what she'd like known. 
Uh, so she took the job also to like try to get a better life for Layla. So Layla has grown up, well not really grown up, but she's been living with her aunt and cousin for a good long while and hasn't really seen her mum for a while. Uh, but now Layla's gone to visit her mum and her mum's, I mean, research partner I suppose, who who lives together. They share a flat because cheaper. They're not together, by the way, so don't don't go thinking that. Um, I mean, they could be, but they're not. And then the research partner's daughter also comes and visit, um, like all for the summer. But you know, being in the north of Norway, it's just winter time, so it felt like winter. So the whole reason Layla's there is to like get to know her mum, spend some time with her mum. Uh, but then the like research they've been doing kind of ends up giving them the, the opportunity to kind of do some illegal stuff technically, but they kind of get to do this expedition where uh, Layla and you know, their research partner's daughter also goes along for, and they end up crossing the Arctic um, and following this fox. It's, it's a whole journey. Uh, it's, 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 I mean, Kieran writes so beautifully, and, you know, getting all these graphics along the way, which everything's in, like, blue colours, um, which kind of just adds on to the whole story and the journey in this story it was i i loved it i mean for the most part i did not know what was going on or what what's the point of this book but you know it's based on something real so uh having that like in the back of your mind makes it feel like there's a point to the the whole of it but you know Pure total. And then I read Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake. So this is the first Olivia Blake book I've read. I do have the Atlas Paradox, which is the second book. I don't have the Atlas Six because I haven't bought it. Well, Okay, so the Athletics Paradox came out like with special sprayed edges and stuff, so I had to buy it, didn't I? And um, completely forgot that maybe you should buy book one first. Or, you know, also. I will eventually, because it kind of is on my goal for 2023 to, to read the, those books. Because I think the third one comes out in like January 24? Something along the lines. Anyway. This is a very weird book. <laughs> Super weird book. But also one if you like read the author's note and uh, you know see the whole reasoning for her writing the book in the first place, you kind of get more of a sense of what it's actually about. I read the author's note after I finished the book. But basically it's about these two people and they randomly meet She's in a relationship, so she's not, like, single and free to mingle, but, you know, you can have friends. Uh, and this guy is, like, just up in his head, doing maths and thinking about bees. Um, so somewhere along the line, they agree, or she tells him to, like, well, we can have, like, this many conversations, and you can decide when and where, and so on and so forth. Not completely correct all that but somewhere along those lines um i mean they obviously end up falling for each other and all that jazz the chapters are so long <laughs> it made um it made me bored at times because i want to fit i want to like when i read a book i want to like when i stop reading i want to finish uh, by a chapter so it's like a lot easier to get into um, which was hard for this when it's like a hundred page a chapter I mean sure I'll read a hundred pages but I, I want to take breaks give me breaks okay so this book is very very a very mental health 
focused. That was a lot for my little brain. That was a lot for my brain, for my soul, for my everything. Especially reading the author's note after. Maybe if you read this book, read the author's note first and then read the book. Just slight recommendation. Well, actually, it might spoil you the things, but either way, read book and author's note. I forgot what I was going to say. Cool. Basically, there's a whole point to it is very much a you can live with your mental health problems you just need to learn how to live with them and what works for you uh and like the people around you what can they do to help you and what can you do to help them it's all all of that um i liked it but also it was a very very heavy read um being that mental health focused but yeah uh it did made me more excited to read the athletic six and uh other Oli olivia blake books um so i like to writing and the very last book i have for this round is a book of night by holly black so i do believe there's gonna be sequel or sequels I don't know how many, but I do think there's at least one more book coming with this. I do feel like um, the ending could work as an ending, so there's that. Having read this, where do I even start? I'm not even sure how to explain this book, so I'm just gonna go with the flow and ramble on about absolutely nothing like I usually do. So my only experience with Holly Black is Cruel Prince. Uh, when I read this, I'd only read The Cruel Prince. I have since also read um, Tithe and those other books. Uh, but still, th those six books, seven if you count the How the Elf Fame, Blood Hate Stories, whatever that's called, um, the short story collection, those are very different from this book. This book is not a fairy book. <laughs> I uh, almost said it's a vampire book, but no. Um, it's more of a murder book. And magic and stuff like that. Well, yeah. I'm not sure what people who's read this book and complained about this book were expecting of this book. Because I enjoyed it. It was weird AF. There was like lots of like bloody scenes and all of that. But also, we need different kinds of books in life, don't we? So, you know, it's a book with blood and murder and mystery and fantasy aspects drawn in. Best way I can explain this book. I enjoyed it. It was so different from the other Holo Black books I've read, which are, you know, Crawl Prince based. But it's the same easy writing in it. It's the same, you know, you you just get sucked in because Holo Black's writing, the ones I've experienced anyway, is very easy. You just get sucked in and then you're finished with another book. That can happen. Um, so yeah, I liked it. I feel like it could stand on its own, but I also, I want more. But that's just because I'm a greedy little bitch who likes books. <laughs> wow. As per usual, that was a total lot, lot, lot of nonsense. Blah, 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 So much nonsense. That is me in a nutshell. Gotta love it. Or hate it. I don't mind. I I just knocked over all the books. Yay. Um, yeah, me in a nutshell, total a not of a not sense. I don't even know what I said there, but there you go. 
anyway thank you for watching all my nonsense and uh, yeah if you read any of the books do let me know always curious about all, all, all the author all the, I'm always curious about other people's thoughts on um, the same books I've read uh, or you know books I haven't read could be interesting what am I even saying I don't know anyway thank you so much for watching I shall see you all next time until then take care bye bye